When performing the physical examination of the dairy cow, it is important to develop an ordered routine to make sure all aspects of the exam are performed accurately and consistently. It is helpful to begin by observing the cow from a distance to assess the animal's symmetry, stance, and body condition. Look for distension on either side of the abdomen that may indicate vagal indigestion. Next, elicit urine by rubbing the perineal region in a circle with your hand. Hold a urine stick under the urine stream before evaluating the strip for ketones, glucose, blood, protein, and pH. Ketones and blood levels may be slightly elevated soon after calving. Animals with highly elevated ketones will require treatment for ketosis. High protein with low blood levels may indicate renal disease and require a blood test to confirm. After collecting urine, move to the left side of the cow. Place your stethoscope under the elbow to listen for heart murmurs and to evaluate rhythm and heart rate. Sinus arrhythmia is unusual in a cow. You may hear a third hard sound from an audible S3 or in an animal with a split S2, but this is considered normal. Fast, regular, irregular murmurs from atrial fibrillation, atrial premature contractions, or ventricular premature contractions may indicate gastrointestinal disease. Grade 1 or grade 2 murmurs are usually considered normal. If you are able to palpate a thrill from the murmur, it is considered abnormal. The heart rate of a normal cow will usually be between 60 and 80 beats per minute. Elevated heart rates often correlate with pain in dairy cattle. When evaluating the lungs, it's important to remember that cows have a relatively small lung field. Listen to the cow take a breath and move your stethoscope to evaluate the sound of air moving in and out of the lungs. Inspiration is typically louder than expiration. Expiration is usually passive. Loud expirations may indicate a respiratory problem. Respiratory rates will have some variation in the cow in cold or hot weather. Next, evaluate the rumen for firmness. Push the stethoscope into the animal's side and listen for at least two minutes to confirm the rate of contraction. Rumen contractions will occur at a rate of about one to four contractions in a two-minute period. Listen for splashy sounds and feel for the strength of the contractions. Next, ping the cow to evaluate the abdomen. Pings are high-pitched sounds caused by the interface between fluid and gas in the abdomen. Start with your stethoscope at the paralumbar fossa. Ping as hard as you can to elicit an audible sound. Then ping while listening with the stethoscope between the ribs and along the lower abdomen. Left displaced abomasin, free gas in the rumen, and on rare occasion free gas in the abdomen will cause audible pings in the left side of the cow. Differentiate between LDA and rumen pings by location. LDA pings are usually audible in the area between ribs 9 and 13. When there is free gas in the rumen, pings will extend dorsally and caudally through the paralumbar fossa. Surgery is not required for free gas in the rumen, but in the event of left displaced abomasum, the animal will usually require surgery to correct the problem. Palpate the prefemoral and prescapular lymph nodes to assess their size and evaluate the animal for signs of lymphoma associated with bovine lymphosarcoma. Perform the withers pinch test by grabbing the top of the withers and watching for the animal to dip down in response. A response usually means the animal is free from hardware disease. A response may be helpful in ruling out hardware disease, but even normal animals may not respond to the test. Similarly, some examiners will push in the xiphoid region and listen for sounds from the trachea to evaluate abdominal pain. Test hydration status by pinching and letting go of the skin on the neck. Skin that is slow to conform again may indicate dehydration. Take the cow's rectal temperature. Normal temperature will usually be between 100 and 102.5 degrees 
but may also vary according to the outside temperature. On the right side, listen for murmurs again. Any murmur heard on the right is pathological and usually indicative of endocarditis. Listen to the lungs again to evaluate unusually loud inspirations or expirations. There are many causes of audible pings on the right side of the animal, including free gas in the rectum, gas in the colon, gas in the uterus, or bicycle dilatation. Pings may also be caused by right-displaced abomasum or volvulus. Right-displaced abomasum is usually audible in different locations between ribs 11 and 13. Differentiate between RDA and abomasum volvulus by pinging cranial to rib 10 over the liver. Cecal volvulus may be present if pings are audible more caudally than pings from abomasal volvulus. Pings caused by mesenteric volvulus are audible over the intestines. By pushing in and around the lower abdomen, the intestines can be shifted to help differentiate between inconsistent pings resulting from gas or by consistent pings caused by a lesion. Evaluating pings on the right side can be very challenging and may require exploratory surgery when a thorough examination is inconclusive in an animal exhibiting symptoms of discomfort and pain. Collect milk from each quarter individually in a strip cup. Examine the milk for abnormalities that indicate mastitis, such as discoloration, chunks, or the presence of blood. Subclinical mastitis may be evaluated using the California mastitis test, which detects somatic cell concentrations. Perform a rectal exam by putting on a sanitary sleeve. Apply adequate amounts of lube to the sleeve. Enter the rectum to palpate the cervix, uterus, ovaries, left kidney, rumen, iliac lymph nodes, and to check the abdominal space for any distension or abnormalities. Examine the thickness of the uterine fluid. Thin fluid with an unusually strong smell may indicate metritis, 